tremendously detrimental effects is so-called sleep apnea. So this is basically bouts of suffocation or lack of oxygenation during sleep. This is particularly the case for people that are very heavy set, and that heavy set could be from obesity. It could also be heavy set from having too much muscle. A lot of people who are carrying too much muscle will actually have sleep apnea without realizing it. Sleep apnea is actually very dangerous. It's associated with a number of cardiovascular issues. It's associated with sexual dysfunction. It's associated with issues with cognition. Sleep apnea is bad. A lot of people will have to use the PAP, which is a, um, it's a device. It looks like a sort of a, like a snorkel mask or dive mask. Um, it's a whole apparatus that people will go to sleep with. However, many people can relieve themselves of sleep apnea, provided it's not too serious and can sleep much better. In fact, I think all people can sleep much better if they train themselves to be nose breathers while they sleep. There are a lot of reasons to be a nose breather unless you are breathing very hard due to exercise or talking or eating. That was all covered in James Nestor's book, Breath, The New Science of a Lost Art. It's been covered in a number of different podcasts. We've talked about it on this podcast as well. It's a good idea to be a nose breather unless you need to mouth breathe. And it's a great idea. It's a superb idea to be a nose breather in sleep. And one way to really get good at that is to take a little bit of medical tape and to tape your mouth shut before going to sleep. You heard me right, put some medical tape over your mouth and force yourself to nose breathe during sleep. It also prevents snoring in most cases, really offsets sleep apnea. Sleep apnea, again, being a very serious health concern. I should also mention as a tool, that if you have a hard time being a nose breather in sleep, you can try doing your cardiovascular exercise, at least the lower intensity cardiovascular exercise through purely nasal breathing. And one way to do that, again, is to tape your mouth shut or put a gulp of water in your mouth, but don't actually swallow that mouthful of water or to use a mouthpiece or just deliberately keep your mouth closed and insist on breathing through your nose. Most people find that when they start doing cardiovascular exercise that way, it's really challenging at first. But over time, they actually can feel quite calm and still can generate a lot of physical effort purely using nose breathing. The reason that doing nose breathing during cardiovascular exercise translates to being a nose breather during sleep is that your sinuses actually can dilate. They're plastic and over time, plastic meaning they're, they're, sh they're malleable, that is, and they can become wider. You're not going to get giant nostrils. Don't worry about it. Your airways within your, your skull because that's what the sinuses really are, these little passages within the skull, and of course within the nasal passages, are, will dilate and will allow you to breathe more easily through your nose. But for those of you that are waking up in the middle of the night, breathing on your back, or your partner is telling you that, or other people are telling you that, or that person on the plane with your mouth hanging open and drooling and your mouth breathing, terrible, 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 for health reasons and other reasons, put some medical tape over your mouth, learn to be a nose breather during sleep, your sleep will improve and your daytime feelings of wakefulness and focus will improve. Your cardiovascular health will improve and on and on and on.